Let's go to the next page, page two in the notes, page seven in the book, page 17 in the ebook. What you see on the screen and in the middle or top part of page uh, of the notes there or the book is a visual representation of a proper workflow for photographers. There is a linear representation of this workflow chart that shows step one, what to do, step two, so on and so forth. It's available in the front of my book. It's available on the free useful downloads. We will be covering it in class four. And if you still want it before then, you can go to that post I just did on Photoshop workflow for photographers and talk a lot about that. So if a picture is truly worth a thousand words, and here's an overall visual representation of a proper workflow, and you'll notice that everything centers around a master file. Remember, I want to get the absolute most out of a file. So using Photoshop is not for every file, okay? It's only for those files ultimately deserving of making a master file. And we're gonna talk about how to pick those in class five, the second half of that is called edit for success. Creating a master file is not for every image, it's for those images that you want to spend time with, doing all that's necessary to make your image pretty. Here's where you're gonna pour your artistic blood, sweat, and tears in your image using the methods shown in these seminars and what have you. Now, what is a master file? There's a definition in the middle of page two, which says that it's a 16-bit, unflattened, unsharpened, uncropped, unresized file designated as such in its file name. And if none of that makes any sense to you right now, hang around here during these seminars and it'll all, every one of those words will make sense eventually. So why create a master file? The main reason is because it's multi-purpose. Uh, you create, if I go back to that chart, you create the file once and from that you can derive various sizes and, and what have you, depending on what the use of the image is. Uh, I should also mention too, that everything that you see on the left-hand side of this visual flow chart is pretty much the creative part. Everything on the right-hand side is fairly procedural with the exception of cropping. You can obviously, you can get very, very creative with your cropping. So just kind of keep that in mind. Why create a master file? Because it's multi-purpose. Oh, a good example of that is if you're entering the San Diego County Fair, if it was me, I'd create your master file before you even entered the contest. Tier one of the contest, you send a small low res JPEG for the judges to look at. If you make it to tier two, which is one out of three images, then you're gonna go back to your master file. And in this time, you're gonna create a file just for Pret. OK, and as we talked about in class one a couple of weeks ago, I put any image that has to do with a file, including the raw files in its own folder and call that folder the name of the file. OK, why else did you create a master file? Because we're working in layers, which we'll talk about in a second, it's easily correctable. And the other advantage is you can sharpen the size. If you sharpen your master file and let's say it's a 12 by 18 and 300 PPI from your raw file, and you've created a master file from that, if you sharpen your master file and then you need an eight by 10, then your eight by 10 is over sharpened. So you, you never sharpen your master file, you only sharpen to size. And you can see that in the flow chart here, just so you know that the sharpening is way after the master file is created. Okay, so with all of that in mind, let me show you what a master file actually looks like in Photoshop. And I'll go back to the definition I gave you, what is a master file? It's 16 bit. Yeah, we're 16 bits. You can see right here in the document window. It's unflattened. Yep, we got all these layers over here in the layers panel. It's uncropped and it's unresized and it's designated as such in its file name and saved as a PSD. So you can see in my file name here, it's underscore capital M for master file. And like I mentioned earlier, I save in a PSD. So don't forget, it won't be unusual to have multiple files from the same original image. So your best bet is to create a file folder named after your file and store all related files into it. Let me show you how that looks. Here's the folder for that master file we just worked on. Of course, you can see the original raw file right here. You can see the duplicated and renamed raw file here. And then of course it's associated .xmp file. We also have the master file here. And of like I mentioned earlier, it is a .pst with the underscore capital M in the file name. And lastly, we'll have all sorts of files, as you can see, that are prepped for different sizes and, of course, sharpened at those sizes, including a JPEG here that is suitable for, say, entering the San Diego County Fair Tier 1.